Beyonce has some dark secrets. Here are the top 10 celebrities who tried to warn us about Beyonce. First off, we have Wendy Williams. When Beyonce was set to release her HBO special, Life is But a Dream, Wendy Williams was quick to say, quote, I am a Beyonce fan and I'm gonna watch her upcoming documentary. Because fortunately, one of the TVs in our kitchen has closed captioning, so I'll be able to understand what she says. The audience began laughing nervously before Williams went in for the kill. You know Beyonce can't talk. She sounds like she has a fifth grade education, she says. This did not go over so well with Wendy's audience who responded with several boos. Excuse me, I just said I was a fan, she says, but we have to call a spade a spade. Williams' comments did not go over well with the Beyonce fans. It was also picked up by several media outlets who reported on Williams' commentary. Next up, we have Azalea Ben. Thanks. Azalea has a lot to say about everything and anything, except her own music that apparently is not doing too well. In 2016, following the release of Beyonce's award-winning album, Lemonade, Azalea was quick to respond to writer Tanisi Coates' praise of Beyonce's work. I don't think for a second that Beyonce was intelligent enough to come up with any of those ideas on her own, she tweeted. But there's an update on the Azalea Banks Beyonce drama as just a few weeks ago, Azalea made another comment about her. Beyonce announced details of her new album, Renaissance Act 2, during the Super Bowl, and as soon as the advertisement concluded, Beyonce released the project's first two songs, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, and the banjo twang of the former and the slow pacing of the latter both seem to confirm ongoing speculation that Beyonce was planning on releasing a country album. Now, Azalea Banks has spoken up, warning her fellow performer that she was making a huge mistake. In an Instagram stories post, she said about the new material, quote, nothing country about it. You're setting yourself up to be ridiculed again. There's a theatrical element to country music. The critics are not going to accept an ugly blonde wig and bullying from Jay-Z. It's giving big time musical grift. Yes, black girls can make country music, she continued, but you're just really not hitting the button. Our next point is is not about a celebrity, but actually about a movement that's insane. There's a movement going around for the last decade that believes that Beyonce is associated with the Illuminati and is trying to take down America. Beyonce and her husband, Jay-Z, have long been the subject of conspiracy theories and wild fantasies. The idea is that the two are members of the Illuminati and are secretly ushering a revolution, a new world order, and brainwashing the public through their music videos and dance routines. Untangling the complexities of the Illuminati conspiracy would require its own video, but in a nutshell, conspiracy theorists allege that the world is run by an ancient cabal of cultists who communicate through secret signals, sometimes concealed within the music videos. But it's a bit weird that these supposedly all-powerful celebs can't just speak privately or send text messages to, but essentially that is the idea. For several years, Jay-Z has, during his performances, made a hand signal that forms a triangle. This is supposedly meant to represent a diamond and has become synonymous with Jay-Z and his record label. Occasionally though, Beyonce will also flash this hand signal, likely in support of her husband. Thus, conspiracy theorists believe that both Jay-Z and Beyonce are in the Illuminati. Next up, let's discuss Beyonce's fake pregnancy. TMZ alleged that Beyonce's 2011 pregnancy was fake. I know it sounds insane, but in 2011, the internet internet was buzzing with rumors that Beyonce was not really pregnant and that she's wear and that she was wearing a fake stomach in an elaborate cover-up scheme. A controversial video actually went viral online and that even fueled the fire more. Beyonce appeared on a Australian TV show called Sunday Night wearing a tight red dress that accentuated her baby bump. But when she sits down in her chair, her baby bump appears to collapse inward, leading many to believe that it's not her real stomach after all, but a prosthetic device intended to deceive. But why would she
she be fake pregnant? There were rumors that she had hired a surrogate mother to carry the kid so she didn't have to put her body through the strains of being pregnant. Next up we have Kid Rock. The born free and cowboy singer threw some serious shade at Beyonce in an interview with Rolling Stone. Published a few years ago after the release of his new album First Kiss. He told Rolling Stone he is quote flabbergasted by the attention she receives. Beyonce to me doesn't have an effing purple rain but she's the biggest thing on earth he says. How can you be that big without at least one sweet home Alabama? People are like Beyonce's hot. She got a nice butt. I'm like cool. I like skinny white chicks. Doesn't really do much to me. Beyonce has not responded to Kid Rock's very offensive remarks. However, the Beyonce fans have taken action to defend their Grammy Award winning queen in a way only Beyonce fans could. By flooding Kid Rock's Instagram page with bee emojis. And then Kid Rock posted a photo of bee repellent. Yikes. Next up we have Piers Morgan. When Beyonce released Lemonade in 2016, Azalea Banks was not the only celebrity who wasn't pleased with her. In a Daily Mail article, Piers Morgan criticized Beyonce by calling her militant. In a tweet, share, in a tweet sharing the article, Morgan said, quote, I prefer the old Beyonce, the one who didn't use grieving mothers to shift records and further fill her already massively enriched purse. Morgan also recalls interviewing Beyonce at President Barack Obama's inaugural ball and meeting a very bright, warm, funny, sharp star that pains to be seen as an entertainer and musician and not as a black woman who sings. He remembers the singer when asked if she ever experienced racism in her childhood, saying, I feel with my career I've broken barriers. I don't think people think about my race anymore. Now it seems to be the complete opposite, Piers says. The new Beyonce wants to be seen as a black woman activist first and foremost, and then entertainer and musician second. He, he then questions Beyonce's intentions for showing the grieving mothers of Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin in her video for Lemonade, contending that both women were exploited to promote the album. Next up, let's discuss Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister. In a viral video years and years ago, Solange was seen hitting Beyonce's husband Jay-Z in an elevator after he allegedly cheated on Beyonce. Jay-Z's album 444 alluded to him being unfaithful. He wrote, look, I apologize. I often womanize. Took for my child to be born to see through a woman's eyes. The rapper and Beyonce had planned to do a joint album years ago, but ended up doing solo records instead. We were using our art almost like a therapy session and we started making music together. And then the music that she was making at the time was further along. So her album came out as opposed to the joint album that we were working on. Next up we have 50 Cent. 50 Cent has never come out and said the words I hate Beyonce but during multiple interviews over the years the rapper has implied he's not the biggest fan of Queen B or her husband Jay Z. Speaking to People in 2015 50 Cent defended the Grammy's decision to award Album of the Year to Beck over Beyonce's album, saying Beck produced his own record. He wrote it. There's 11 producers on Beyonce's album. That is a fair analysis and not necessarily an insult, but let's take a little deeper. A year prior, as Beyonce and Jay-Z tried to move on from leaked security footage showing Beyonce's sister Solange attacking Jay-Z in an elevator, 50 Cent publicly recalled a time Beyonce allegedly confronted him inside a inside a Las Vegas nightclub. One time, Beyonce jumped off of a ledge and came running over because she thought me and Jay-Z were having issues, he told a radio station. And I'm like, what the F? Did she really just bump and run up on me like that? She bugged out at me. Next up, we have Etta James. Beyonce earned arguably the best reviews of her entire movie career playing legendary singer Etta James in the 2008 flick Cadillac Records. She even attended the Los Angeles premiere of the movie with Etta James, suggesting that the two were on friendly terms, at least professionally. Apparently, this was not the case. During a 2009 concert, Etta James, who died in 2012, made it very, very clear she was not happy about Beyonce singing her iconic 1961 song, At Last, at President Barack Obama's inaugural ball in 2008. I tell you, that woman he had singing for him, singing my song, she's gonna get her butt whipped. She says, The great Beyonce, I cannot stand her. Etta James said, Beyonce has, quote, no business being up there singing, singing on a big old President Day, and singing my song that I have been singing forever. Lastly, we have 
Rihanna, who allegedly has some beef with Queen B. Apparently, the work singer wants Jay Z back, and that is why she is casting some shade. Rihanna and Jay Z have known one another since 2004 when the young singer from Barbados was called into the offices at Def Jam Recordings, where Jay Z worked as the president. Rihanna has since admitted to being incredibly nervous about meeting him and told The Guardian in 2007 she didn't actually get nervous until she was face to face with the man who would change her life. As she put it, I was like, oh god, he's right there. I can't look. I can't look. Before Beyonce married Jay-Z, Rihanna and him were constantly seen in paparazzi photos looking pretty cozy with each other. Beyonce seems to be a generally well-liked celebrity, but here are some celebrities who have exposed Beyonce's dark side. First off, we have Keisha Cole. In 2013, when Beyonce released Bow Down, one of the people who were not pleased with her was fellow singer Keisha Cole. In a series of tweets, Cole called Beyonce out. I can't stand when people are all self-righteous when it's convenient and it makes them good. First women need to stick together. This girl better bow down, Cole tweeted, alleging that Beyonce was being hypocritical. Next up, we have Donald Trump, former president of the United States. Donald Trump is not in the good books of many celebs, Beyonce included. In 2016, when he was running for office, he didn't have most celebrities' support. And if his 2019 Minneapolis rally speech is anything to go by, he didn't need them, apparently. At the rally, Trump sent some words in the direction of Beyonce, Jay-Z, and even Bruce Springsteen, who rallied behind Hillary Clinton. I didn't need Beyonce and Jay-Z. I didn't need little Bruce Springsteen, Trump said. I really like Jay-Z, but there is trouble in paradise. When his wife's sister starts whacking him, it's not good. No help from Beyonce leads to a mess. Is another quote Trump said in 2014 after Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister, was caught attacking Jay-Z in an elevator after he was allegedly caught cheating on Beyonce. But why are we caring about what Donald Trump says anyway when he has said mean things to nearly every single celebrity out there? Years ago, when discussing Angelina Jolie, Trump said, quote, I'm not saying she's an unattractive woman, but she's not beauty by any stretch of the imagination. And now she's like a representative of the United Nations and world peace on hunger and all this crap. It's called give me a break. But she's not in terms of beauty. She's not a great beauty. She's okay, but she's not a great beauty. I really understand beauty. I do own Miss Universe. I own Miss USA. Wow. In the history of every negative comment said about Beyonce, perhaps Carlos Santana's words reign supreme and not in a good way. In an interview with the New Zealand Herald, Santana said, I think Adele won a Grammy because she can sing sing. With all respect to our sister Beyonce, Beyonce is very beautiful to look at and it's more a modeling kind of music. She's not a singer singer. One hit wonder, Kia, known for her 2001 My Neck My Back, had some things to get off her chest following the release of Beyonce's Lemonade. First of all, the video was tired, she says, and through and long, and it made black people look bad as hell. You're walking around with this blonde hair, but you want African kings and queens in your videos? Interesting. Our next point is not about a celebrity, but about a movement that believes Beyonce is associated with the Illuminati and is trying to take down America. Beyonce and her husband, Jay-Z, have long been the subject of conspiracy theories and wild fantasies. The idea is that the two are members of the Illuminati and are secretly ushering a revolution, a new world order, brainwashing the public through music videos and dance routines. Untangling the complexities of the Illuminati conspiracy would require its own video, but in a nutshell, conspiracy theorists allege that the world is run by an ancient cabal of cultists who communicate through secret signals. Some Sometimes concealed within music videos. It's a bit weird that these supposedly all-powerful people can't just speak privately or send text messages to one another, but that is 
essentially the idea. For several years, Jay Z has, during his performances, made a hand signal that forms a triangle. This is supposedly meant to represent a diamond and has been synonymous with Jay Z and his record label. Occasionally, Beyonce will also flash the hand signal, likely in support of her husband. Thus, conspiracy theorists believe that Jay Z's iconic hand signal is secretly signaling his devotion to the Illuminati. It's no secret that Jay Z is a bit of a ladies' man. He's been in the spotlight, so his relationships have had some light shown on them as well. Blue Cantrell was one of his most widely talked about exes, and she definitely threw some shade when she made comments about the connection between her name and that of Beyonce's daughter, Blue Ivy. Her sarcastic comment about how she quote loved their child's name raised a few eyebrows and surely ruffled Beyonce's feathers. In 2003, Blue Cantrell launched a blistering attack on chart rival Beyonce, claiming the Destiny's Child beauty was quote ripping me off. Cantrell was fuming after hearing Beyonce's 2003 single Baby Boy because she believed it was far too similar to her own number one hit Bree. Both songs are edgy R&B tunes featuring dancehall star Sean Paul. She moans, Beyonce is talented and beautiful and I'm a fan, but she has a song out which is really similar to mine. She uses words which are in the hook of my song. And if she's that talented, she wouldn't have to copy somebody else. Her song Baby Boy has the exact exact word breathe in the hook. She's ripping me off, but there is no animosity because I'm a really positive person. However, I'm a little disappointed because she is established and didn't have to do that. But she won't get away with plagiarizing me because I am a number one artist. Blue's anger is increased because Beyonce chose to use Sean Paul in her song as well. And she reckoned that his presence was a direct dig at her. She added, now she is doing a song with Sean Paul because I'm linked with Sean Paul, so I don't know what her intentions are. I'm not tit for tat like that. I don't waste my time sitting around trying to think about what Beyonce is thinking. Next up, we have megastar Taylor Swift. Queen B's fans accused the Me singer of copying Beyonce's 2018 Coachella set with her performance at the Billboard Music Awards in 2019, both of which heavily featured drum lines in very similar choreography. I see Taylor Swift is is doing the, the great value version of Beyonce's homecoming, one Twitter user joked. But Beyonce is not the only celebrity that Taylor has allegedly ripped off. After Taylor released Shake It Off, she was met with a lawsuit after another band accused her of stealing their song. The lawsuit was filed by Sean Hall and Nathan Butler, the songwriters behind Play Is Gonna Play, a 2000s track by the R&B group 3LW that contains the lines, Play Us, They Gonna Play. And and haters they gonna hate. They accused Swift of using those lines without permission or credit on Shake It Off, which was released in 2014 and became one of her defining hits, notching four weeks at number one on the Billboard chart. After Taylor released her album Red, singer Matt Nathanson claims that Taylor stole many lyrics from his music. One of Swift's songs from her album Red, entitled All Too Well, includes the line, and I forget about you long enough to forget Get why I needed to, which Nathanson claims is more or less the same as a part of his 2003 song I saw. And I'll forget about you long enough to forget why I need to. Almost identical lyrics. He tweeted about the coincidence but has since deleted the message. Nathanson returned to Twitter to share his thoughts after and said, So far, my favorite thing about today is the wave of Taylor Swift fans calling me a prick on Twitter for writing my song I saw in 2003. Taylor is a self proclaimed named fan of Nathan's and has been seen at some of his concerts with lyrics to his music written on her arms. In a now deleted tweet, Nathanson wrote, quote, she's definitely a fan and now she's a thief. Now back to Beyonce. Our next Beyonce hater is 50 Cent. 50 Cent has never come out and said the words I hate Beyonce, but during multiple interviews over the years, the rapper has implied he's not the biggest fan of Queen B or her husband Jay-Z. Speaking to 
People in 2015, 50 Cent defended the Grammys' decision to award Album of the Year to Beck over Beyonce, saying, Beck produced his record, he wrote the record. There's 11 producers on Beyonce's album. That is a fair analysis and not necessarily an insult, but let's dig a little deeper. A year prior, as Beyonce and Jay Z tried to move on from leaked security footage showing Beyonce's sister Solange attacking Jay Z in an elevator, 50 Cent publicly recalled a time Beyonce allegedly confronted him inside a Las Vegas nightclub. One time, Beyonce jumped off a ledge and came running over because she thought me and Jay had issues, he told radio station Power 105.1. And I'm like, what the F? Did she really just jump and run up on me like that? She bugged out at me. Next up, we have Sana Lathan, who apparently bit Beyonce at a party. You heard that right, she bit Beyonce. Although Sana denies this, she also said she is not bothered by the rumors linking her to the hashtag who bit Beyonce movement. The actress appeared on the cover of Health magazine years ago where she broke her silence on how she felt about the reports that she allegedly was the actress who bit Beyonce at a Jay Z concert after party. The wild story story gained a lot of steam in the media when Tiffany Haddish recalled her version of the events but refused to name the attacker. I think it's the most absurd thing I've ever been involved with, Sonia told the magazine. Thank God I've been in this business for 20 years and I've had so many rumors about me. They used to devastate me in my 20s but in order to survive in this business you just have to let it roll. Lastly we have Kid Rock. The born free and cowboy rocker threw some serious shade at Beyonce in an interview with Rolling Stone, published years ago after the release of his album First Kiss. He told the music magazine that he is flabbergasted by the attention Beyonce receives. Beyonce to me doesn't have an effing purple rain, but she's the biggest thing on earth, he says. How can you be that big without at least one sweet home Alabama? People are like, Beyonce's hot. She's got a nice... I'm like, cool, well I like skinny white chicks. Doesn't really effing do much for me. Beyonce has not responded to Kid Rock's offensive remarks. However, the Beehive, Beyonce's fans, have taken action to defend their Grammy winning queen. In a way, only the Beehive would. By flooding his Instagram page with bee emojis. And then Kid Rock posted a photo of bee repellent. <laughs> 